What's up, Loop Community? This is Matt McCoy. I'm the founder of loopcommunity.com, and I'm an Ableton Live certified trainer. Today, I'm going to show you a tip that will hopefully save you a lot of time as you're planning your worship sets inside of Ableton Live. Here's something I've done for the past 15 years, and it's worked really well for me. Instead of creating a brand new Ableton Live session every single weekend, what I do is I have one Ableton Live file that I call Master Tracks or Master Loops. And it's one file that has all of my multi tracks and loops that I play in worship. So here's what mine looks like, and it's, a pre it's pretty messy because I've been you know, working on this for probably 15 years. So I have a lot of stuff in here, but I have all of my songs in here alphabetically from top to bottom, all right? So, you know, Arms Will Hold the Universe, you know, uh, Better Is One Day, blessed, blessed Be Your Name. Some of these are pretty old songs, and it's probably because this is pretty, I've been doing this for a while. All right, Christ is Enough, Cornerstone. So I have all of my tracks here. Now what I do is every single Sunday, all I do is I roll in to rehearsal and I click the MIDI button here and I clear my mappings from last week. And then I remap my Looptimus controller to what songs I'm doing for this Sunday. So for example, if I'm gonna do Here For You, I'm gonna go ahead and map that to uh, 1A on my Looptimus. And then let's just say my next song is gonna be um, how He Loves, so I'm gonna to go to two and go to two A, all right? And then my third song is, let's just say we're doing, uh, what else we got? I Will Follow, so I'm gonna do that. And then I just map my stop button, and boom, done. I have all my mappings for my worship set. Really One, easy, two, right? Three, I don't even have to intro. do anything. Hit stop, launch the next song under two A, How he loves. you know? And it gives me my, you know, the click, the tracks. Now here's the thing. The only time I'm actually spending on this is when I'm adding a new song to my library. So the amount of time that this is saving me every single week is a lot because I'm not making a whole new set every time. I'm just adding new songs to my library. So if I were to start a brand new library, which I might need to do because I've got a lot of songs in here and a lot that I don't even use anymore. I would go to File, uh, New Set. All right, I'm not gonna save that one. And what I would do is I would just go ahead and uh, delete these MIDI tracks delete these tracks, right? And let's go and just start a library. I'm gonna to go to my worship songs and this is where all of my tracks are. And let's go ahead and bring in some songs, all right? So we're gonna bring in Cornerstone. This is gonna be my cue track. All right, so I'm gonna bring in cues. And then I'm just gonna hold Shift to select all of these. Hold Command to deselect, drag and drop. Boom. So there's Cornerstone. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this over here on the right to Cornerstone and go ahead and type in my tempo while I'm at it, which is cornerstone is 72, right? So edit launch tempo, 72 BPM. And then let's go ahead and bring in um, a live. So I'm gonna bring in my cues, bring in all my other tracks, rename this to a live, and this is at 132 BPM. So I'm just typing that in as I go. And then let's go ahead and just bring in um, one more. Let's do uh, How He Loves. Here's my cues. This one I just have to have a split track. So I'm going to bring in the stereo track here. Rename this to How He Loves. All right, 74 BPM. And now what I would do is once you have all these, you know, I'm going to put in all my songs. So alphabetically, A through Z. And I'm just, I can just reorder these alphabetically. So now I've got Alive, Cornerstone, How He Loves. Now, to make this really easy, I would probably color coordinate this stuff. So alive is red, you know. That might make it easier to kind of like, when you're scanning through your master library, that all your tracks are the same color. And you can even make the track title that. And I could be grouping tracks. The point, though, is that it's one file that I keep all of my tracks in, all right? And by doing that, then I, all I have to do is just remap my MIDI controller to what tracks I'm doing. I know that there's a lot of guys on the road that are doing this too, like um, the, uh, Matt Redman, the drummer from Matt Redman who runs all of his tracks, they do the same thing. It's one session with all the songs that Matt Redman plays. So I would now go to File, Save Life Set As, and go ahead and save it to my desktop or you know, in my Documents folder and call it Master Library. You can also do a file collect all and save, and that would make sure that all the audio files get saved into that Ableton Live session so your files stay really organized. The other thing I would make sure to do if you're doing a master library is I would go to, under audio, 
I would go ahead and change the buffer size to be, you know, as high as you can because when you've got all these tracks loaded, you're going to want to be able to have as large of a buffer size as possible. So anyways, I hope that that will help you save a lot of time in creating a set list in Ableton Live. You don't have to be spending hours in your office every single week putting together a live set. Of course, you're trying to automate things, and if you're doing that, then that's awesome, cool. But if you're just running tracks, you do not need to be creating a new live set every week. Just create a master library and then reassign your MIDI controller to what songs you're doing that weekend. Hope that helps you guys. Thanks for being a part of the community.